Hey y'all, Mikey from Rockin' K. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here uh, and you're wondering what have you stumbled upon, well, you got a couple of Americans that are doing the homesteading thing here in Germany. Yes, that's right, Germany. That kind of sets us apart from some of the other YouTube channels that do the homesteading thing because we are navigating our way through uh, doing this in Germany. And let me tell you, it's been an adventure, hence the name, Rockin' K Adventures. All right, folks, so it has been a busy couple of weeks, and you might have noticed that the content has been a little bit sporadic and stuff, but uh, we have been busy, and that's part of the problem. Um, we we had uh, our first cutting of hay. Yes, first cutting for this guy. First cutting ever. Um, we put to work the little Solus tractor, and let me tell you, she, she came through. It was amazing. Uh, I had expectations that were a little bit high for the for the tractor, um, but she did it. She did it, and we put this this uh, Telex drum cutter to work. Uh, we acquired that as well, and then we got ourselves a belt rake and a mini round baler. So. We went through and we did our first cutting of hay and we don't have livestock yet. Uh, so this hay is going to some friends uh, for now. That's our first cutting. So the second cutting more than likely will be uh, for ourselves. Yes, for ourselves. Um, but cutting this hay was an adventure <laughs> to say the least. Uh, you're talking about a guy who's never really cut hay. Um, I helped do hay when I was younger. Um, but yeah, uh, through YouTube University, I learned the, uh, the art of making hay. And it, it's, it's an art. Um, some people think it's, it's cake. It's just, you know, go out, cut it, rake it, bail it. Yeah, well, guess what? The cutter... You gotta learn how to run that. And there was a little bit of a learning curve, not bad. Uh, you gotta figure out how you're gonna cut it, right? Then you gotta rake it. So, you know, the first time you rake it, you gotta spread it out. It's got, cause it's gotta dry. And you gotta learn to do that. And then you gotta learn to row it all up, put it all in nice straight rows so that your baler can pick it up. And then you gotta learn the baler. So, yeah, to say uh, it was an adventure is uh, a little bit of an understatement. Um, there was there was some uh, some hiccups along the way, and you know some bales that didn't get string, uh, stuff like that. Um, the rake was an adventure. Um, I bought a combination style rake which you can see behind me right there, the uh, yellow and red. Um, this combination rake was supposed to do two things. It's supposed to tead the hay out, spread it out across the field so it can dry, and then you install this flag on it and it rows it up for you. You know, you, you use it in the same fashion and then it rows it and basically what it does is it throws it up against this little barrier and puts it in a nice row. Uh, I found that a belt rake, while it does both things okay, it's really good at rowing. It's really good at making the windrows to pick up the hay. Um, but I did find I'm going to have to get a, a regular hay tether, um, you know, a twin star hay tether, uh, the kind with two wheels that spin, and uh, it kind of throws the hay out or the grass out a little better. Uh, and spreads it out a little more uh, on the field so that it can dry better. Um, this was an adventure. Um, I got some clips here, and uh, we'll get them going. Uh, I got a clip here of me getting the mower out ready and then me doing a little bit of mowing. Um, so let's, you know, 
take a look at that. All right, folks. So we got a hole in the weather, and hopefully it looks like everything is good. We got some clouds out that way, but look, and they're going that way. We got to cut this grass. We got to get this grass cut. So actually, we're going to turn it into hay. So first time for me in running this mower and cutting hay. This is going to be an adventure. So let's get this thing swung into position. All right, so we got the mower in position. The way it needs to be. And we got to run our first lap. Let's see how it works out. I'm about to become Farmer Mikey. So as you saw, the, the, the hay was, or the grass was really, really, really tall. Um, this, this actual cutting needed to be done, you know, um, probably a month before we actually were able to get to it. But we didn't have equipment, so we had to do, make do with what we had. Um, I had to go buy equipment and get things rolling, and so it ended up putting us late, right? Um, our field was originally cut by somebody else for hay and they didn't need to use our field for hay this year. Um, so I decided I was going to cut the hay. And then you're like, well, Mikey, what are you going to do with all this hay? Well, so some of it's going to be for sale. Some of it's going to be for livestock. Uh, we do not have livestock yet. We will have livestock here soon. Um, the plan is to do a steer, um, but here in Germany, you can't just buy a steer and put one animal on a field. You have to have multiple animals. The, because of the fact that these are herd animals, the German government says that you need to have more than one. So we're working out with a neighboring farm that we're going to get a couple of uh, steers, one of them being ours, and the others, of course, being theirs. So we're going to have a lot of mouths to feed when it comes to um, hay and, and feed and all that. So with that said, we're cutting hay. It's an adventure. <laughs> um, you may have noticed the channel's been a little uh, sporadic in the last couple of weeks, and that's because we've been cutting hay. Um, like, as you saw that the, the grass was so tall, um, we had no choice but to get on it and, and get engaged with that. So after I cut it, you see it all laying there. Um, the unfortunate thing is I did not, uh, video any of the, the, uh, tedding and the raking. Um, I thought I did, I guess I lost the footage. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. I'm still new to the YouTube, you know? 
I'm, I'm, I'm in it almost a year now. Um, so I'm, I'm learning, but I do have footage of us bailing. So I started out, I was bailing and, um, it's a good idea that I'm not the only one bailing, right? So I bailed the first bit of the, of the field and then, um, Rachel jumped on the tractor and I taught her how to run the baler as well. So we have some footage of me out there on the field with our nice Redlands uh, mini baler. Um, this thing's pretty slick and we'll talk more about it when we come back. So we're in the field, you can see Rachel bailing behind me, but we got a bunch of bales today, if you look up top, I don't know the count yet, um, I've been showing her how to run the baler and everything, and it, there's little hiccups with it because the twine we have is a little bit too big, um, we're going to remedy that when it's already on the way, um, but yeah, we're making hay. This stuff might just be good hay. I'm amazed. So as you saw, that, that round beller is pretty neat. Um, after trying to figure out what I was going to do beller-wise, um, you know, I did a lot of research and watched a lot of videos. And man, I, I'm, I'm going to turn you around a minute and show you something here. It is raining yet again. Yeah, this rain has been getting us, man. So that's some of the, the complications I had with the, with the hay, was the rain. But anyway, back to the baler. Um, so I do have a Redlands baler. Um, I did a lot of research and watched a lot of YouTube and, you know, used the internet. And, you know, this, this baler came highly, highly recommended from, um, I think his name, Darren from... Eighth Day Chronicles, Cross Timber Farm. Uh, he has a really good channel. Um, you should go check that out. Uh, it's called Eighth Day Chronicles. Um, he bought a Redlands. Um, he made some modifications to it, and I'm going to make similar modifications to mine. But he recommended this baler, and I'll tell you what, you know, um, when it comes to the mini, <clears throat> a mini round baler or a small square baler, this tractor cannot do a square baler it has the horsepower but it doesn't have like the weight and the the weight being the problem of if i was to do a square baler um it, it some of you might not know a square baler has a plunger or basically a ram that uh that compacts the hay well if you try using a tractor that is not 
at least a large utility tractor, if not a farm tractor, you're going to be driving along in the field and you're going to be rocking the whole time because that plunger is making the tractor rock. It has nothing to do with the drivetrain and the, and the horsepower or anything like that. It's just the sheer weight of that ram going back and forth. So, I mean, it'd probably rock you to sleep if, 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 if you were trying to do uh, a square baler with a uh, compact or even some small utility tractors. That's not to say you can't do it. I mean, it can be done. I could do it with my tractor and, and get the job done. But man, uh, you know, you're going to be sitting there rocking along and it's just, it's, it's going to be a rough, a, a rough, uh, a rough day bailing. Um, so you saw the baler and what we were doing. Um, yeah. So as I said, we were battling rains and what we had happen, um, and you saw in, in the cutting video, uh, at the tail end of the cutting part, we got rain the minute, the minute I got done cutting, it rained. You know, the weatherman said there was a four-day window in the weather that, you know, it was supposed to be sunny. Um, so we're like, all right, let's get this cut. So we let it, we waited till afternoon, uh, which is, you know, the optimum time to cut the hay. We cut, we cut it. Uh, and right after we got done cutting, it rained. Thankfully, the drum cutter lays it down in, in pretty much rows. So the rain really wasn't able to penetrate down into the, into the hay. Uh, then the, I, I wasn't able to, to ted it out that day. I, I went out the next day to ted it out, uh, and get it all spread. And so I got out there and I got it spread and I am not kidding. I no sooner got it spread and it rained and I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. So in an effort to save the, the, the hay, uh, I went out later that afternoon and, you know, tedded it again to get it turned over and get, try to get it dry. Uh, and then I came out the next day and, and tedded it over and tried to get it to dry. And now we were approaching a window where the weatherman says it was going to rain, right? So we went from, it's supposed to be sunny and we're getting little spots of rain to it's going to, you know, the weatherman saying it's supposed to rain. So I'm like, man, we got to get this stuff off the field because we're going to lose it if, if we get heavy rains. So, you know, I'm the new kid. So I uh, get out the, the hay rake, you know, the, the, band, the band rake, and get it all rowed up. Got it all rowed up and started bailing. And, you know, I had issues with the baler because this, this stuff ended up that it was just, it was too green. It was too wet, too stemmy, too long. Um... It wasn't that bad. Don't don't get me wrong. The the baler did did fine. However, the bales were on the green side, and the problem with a high moisture content on your hay when you're baling it is you run the risk of this stuff getting hot, and get hot it did. So we baled about seventy bales of of the uh, the field, and we, we'll go ahead and walk down there. Uh, even though it is a little bit rainy. Uh, so we got out there, we did about 70 bales, and which was mm, near three quarter, we'll say, three quarter of the field. Um, and so I had the, the bales laying on the field, and when I checked them, I felt the one the next day, and it was hot, like warm warm um so then i grabbed uh a long thermometer that i have jammed it in the bale and the bale was at 150 degrees fahrenheit so if you know anything about it that hay was wanting to catch fire so the only thing we could do you can't put it up got to cut them got to dispose of it so there's some there and don't mind this, this is just all the grass clippings from doing the yard for the doggies. But here's all the rest of it, which is fine. We're building this land up. So I had to slash and cut those first 70 bales. Now, I didn't have time 
to finish bailing. And so the next couple of days it was sunny. Um, I tedded that, uh, that hay over back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, kept a watch on it, making sure it wasn't molding and stuff like that. So I think this is a case where patience would have paid off because we did get that rain, but I was able to get the hay, the, the, the hay turned and, and get it to dry. Now, doing that much turning and stuff, it kind of ruins the hay, but I got it, I got it bailed, right? So we got off the fields. We ended up with, I think it was 36 bales, something like that, right? So we're cutting up, we're cutting up, taking a shortcut here, right? So let me show you what we what we got. And if you saw the uh, the thumbnail photo, you saw the the hay that we got. I'll flip you around. So the trailer's still loaded with the hay. We've been watching the temperature, so you can see the thermometer that's in there. And the thermometer is saying that 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 hay is around seventy degrees, 60, 60 to seventy. Pretty much ambient, right? But we got the trailer full of hay. Um, we were able to finally put it in the barn. What I did was I left the trailer under the overhang where if the bales were actually too wet and they wanted to get hot, I can get them away from a building and not have you know the, the problem with the fire. So, you know, I'm the new kid, I'm learning. Patience would have paid off instead of having 35 or 34, whatever I got, I'd have what like 100 and, 110 bells. Um, that would have been some good money back, right? Because I don't need this cut. I need probably the next cut. I'm not even sure. The next cut's not gonna be as big because of course, I'm not letting the field grow that long again. But like I'm saying, uh, patience, patience would have paid off and I would have been able to get a lot more hay off the field. Um, we only have a couple acres here, so uh, every cut is going to count coming up soon because, you know, I got to feed animals through the winter um, and that's going to be the, the problem. So... It was an adventure. And as you can see, I have, uh, there's 20, 25 on the trailer. No, how many is on the trailer? 24 on the trailer. And there's three, six, nine. So I got uh, 33 bells of good hay. Um, what I'm gonna do is here soon, I'm gonna cut one open, roll them out, and make sure that none of it molded or anything like that. Make sure it's a good quality hay. And then uh, some of it's gonna be given away, and maybe I'll put uh, some bales up for sale. I don't know. But like I said, it, it was an adventure. And uh, that's kind of why the, the content's been a little sporadic is because we had a lot going on. Um, so we're trying to keep the homestead rolling and you know here i am trying to cut ted do all this and buy the equipment you know i had to drive two and a half hours to get one piece of equipment and that was the baler the baler was the long run um the cutter the hay cutter uh right there i had to drive um a little more than an hour to pick that up somewhere around there and the hay rake um, I picked that up and it was, it was an hour ish ride. Um, the hay rake was brand new. The baler was brand new. The cutter was used. Um, all in all, um, I got into the hay business, not including this tractor, uh, for probably like 6,000, somewhere around there. Um, the hay baler being the, the most expensive piece. Uh, the good thing is all this stuff retains its value because once people get them, they don't want to sell them. Um, 
these Ballers are fairly sought after. Um, it took me a while to find a Redlands available uh, for sale. Um, and when it comes to hay cutters and stuff like that and rakes, yeah, there's there's some on the used market, but it's pretty scarce, um, especially something on the middle size, you know. So when I say mid-size, I'm talking like meter 50 to two meter-ish rakes or uh, cutters. Um, there's not many out there. Uh, most hay operations have gone the large scale. And, you know, I'm just a little homestead. I just need something small. So, you know, there wasn't much out there. So I got lucky and I found that, that cutter. Uh, and it was somebody who was doing something just like I was, um, or just like he was doing what I want to do. Um, so he is an older gentleman now, and he's getting out of this, uh, the homesteading life um, and moving because, I mean, he's he was over 70, and he's moving towards, um, you know, He's retiring. He's he's done. Uh, hopefully, I make it past seventy for this because uh, we're just getting started, folks. But like I'm saying, um, we've been busy, and that's kind of where I was going. I had to go all over Germany to pick up this equipment, so that was like three days of a week that I took off. Three of those days, Monday, Wednesday, and a Friday, was spent driving the truck and picking up equipment and getting it home and getting it unloaded, which was kind of sporty too, because all these places I had to have it loaded onto the trailer and this stuff isn't light, right? Um, it doesn't have wheels. Well, the baler has wheels now, but it was in a shipping crate. And so you got to get, you know, a piece of equipment that's, you know, uh, I think the cutter is somewhere around 500 pounds. Something like that. I'm not even sure. It, it's heavy. It's really heavy. And the baler, the baler is, is really heavy. The baler is around a thousand pounds. Um, now these things are put in the back of my truck or in, on my trailer with, you know, equipment where I bought it. And then I got to I got to rely on old Blue here, who is is rated to pick this stuff up. So that that's you know I'm not exceeding its rating, but. I got to get this stuff off and not damage it. So I've been able to do that, thankfully. And now I cut hay. So uh, I've been rambling for a while, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get off of here and and get this video uh, out to you. But I just wanted to let you know what was going on and what we got going. You know why it's been a sporadic, and it's been hey, it's hay season, it's go time, and so. Some of it I didn't, like, it's been go, 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 and I haven't had a chance to record. Plus, I'm a one-man show right now. For the last two weeks, I'm a one-man show, and for another week and change, I'm still a one-man show because uh, Rachel is off, and she is at school in Italy for another two weeks or so, and so it's just me. So... I am the videographer. I am the talent. I am the editor. So, hey, <laughs> this is YouTube life, right? Homesteading life. Nobody said it was easy, right? But it's honest. And, you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to know where my food's coming from. All of it, right? Well, 99% of it because, you know, I'm still going to buy bread and I, I don't think bread is... is economically feasible to to do that and you know there's some some other things so but that hay right there behind me is going to feed the animal that's going to feed me um and yeah we're going to be having we'll have the chickens back we'll have the turkeys back we'll have uh livestock on the farm and you know nobody said homesteading was easy but it is rewarding um, I'm going to go love each and every one of you. If you have not subscribed, please click the subscribe button. If 
You want to know when we get another video out, click that notification bell. And if you're thinking about family, if you're thinking about friends, give them the WhatsApp or the WhatsApp. You know you'd like to hear from them too. Reach out to that friend. Reach out to that family member. Life is short, and you don't want to regret not saying, you know, hi, love you, and what's up. But until the next adventure, Avita Zane. Thank mm -hmm. you.